Morning, everybody. How are you this morning? I pray that you are having an incredible week. It is Wednesday. It is the middle of the week already. Can you believe that? Here it is. It's already Wednesday in a week. And, and I don't know about you, but uh, it just seems like the older I get, that uh, time just uh, just goes a little faster. Uh, and so uh, uh, that's just uh, uh, kind of how Mr. Denise and I talk about that often. Uh, about how time just seems to fly like we'll wake up and it's like oh it's Friday already again and so uh, uh, you know you gotta uh, you gotta fill your medicine pack up again because you've already taken it for the week so it's kind of crazy stuff uh, good morning to everybody that's logging in um, uh, if you would hey hit that share button uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, get it out there this morning um, uh, something that I want to start using and that you're going to hear often, and this is ways that you can help the ministry, help that you can grow our ministry, and that is like, love, care, share. There's those three three little things right down there at the bottom of your uh, that you're watching, and it's the like button, that's that thumbs up, and then there's the love button, that's the heart. And then right beside it is that uh, a smiley emoji, but he's holding a heart. So that's the care button. So like, love, care, and share. That's very vital to the growth of this ministry because every time you like it, love it, or care it, then what you do is uh, it just raises it back up in news feeds. And uh, every time that you share it, you put it on your wall. And that allows your friends and your family to see it. So like, love, care, share. That's uh, that's going to be our push from now on. So, uh, uh, And anytime you want to like that thing, if you like what you see, like what you hear, if you agree, go ahead and hit those buttons. Like, love, care, share. Let's practice it right now. So hit one of those buttons, like, love, or care. Go ahead and hit that. Let me see those those uh, hearts or thumbs up or, uh, or whatever. Let, let's see them uh, kind of. I kind of scroll on up uh, and let, let's see that. Let's see here. Miss Denise is on. Good morning, Nisi. Uh, Miss Mary is here. Good morning, Miss Mary. Miss Judy is here. Good morning. Uh, Miss Mary, I hope you got that share button going. Jack it on around. There we go. Like, love, care, share. There we go. See, now that's what I'm talking about. Every time you do it, all, you're, all you are doing is reloading it back in so that everybody can see and everybody can hear. And that's, a, that's just a way that you can help our ministry here at Ridgewood and, and uh, can just help us in our mission, which is to uh, impact the Arkansas Delta with the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you get in, go ahead and say hello. I've already seen several of you. Uh, good, good, good morning. Hey, we are in a powerful uh, part of John's gospel today. We open chapter 18, and uh, I'm very interested in diving into that. We're going to read the first 11 verses this morning, but uh, I just thought that uh, before we get in there, uh, that before we really take a look at what this is going to look like, that uh, I want to kind of set our hearts up to get ready for this, and I want to set us up for Sunday. I just want us to be prepared. I mean, here we are, like I said, we're in the middle of the week, and um, I want to get us prepared for what God is doing in the life of our church as we as we move forward, uh, and uh, when we get ready to come to church. Are you prayed up when you come to church? Do you come anticipating to see God at work? Do you come celebrating the victories of the past week? Do you come uh, ready to reload for the upcoming week? And that should be our approach. It should not be um, uh, just a, a place to come and, and to gather. Uh, it should be that opportunity to move forward. Okay, it's that, it's the... Uh, it's like this is this is the battle room. This is where you come back off the front lines, and where you have a chance to reload. Okay, because when we walk out of this building on Sundays, guys, I'm just going to be honest with you. Every time we walk out, we're going right back into battle. And so I don't. I, I want to get away from this this hospital or this this country club mentality. Okay, I want to. I want to start understanding that we're here to reload. This is the opportunity. Uh, take you to, to Ephesians 6 when we talk about that whole armor of God. Every Sunday, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Every Sunday should be the opportunity that you're coming off the front lines, you're readjusting that breastplate 
that breastplate of righteousness. You are, are tightening up that helmet of salvation. You're soaking that shield of faith, making it stronger, and you are sharpening your sword, which is that of God's word, and you're lacing up those sandals of peace. You're, you're girding yourself with truth. You're pulling that belt just a little bit tighter. And so that's what Sundays should be about. And we come and we celebrate because we have won the victory over our enemies this past week and that we are preparing for battle for this coming week. And so uh, as we see that and as we approach it, that's a different mentality for Sundays, and I understand that. And so I want to encourage you to join me as we begin to see what God is calling us to do in mission. So right now, we're just going to just going to spend a little time and we're going to prepare because I, I want us to to really understand this uh, this 18th chapter. This is this is the arrest of Jesus. Okay, Jesus is about to be arrested there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, it is the night before the crucifixion, and I want us to understand exactly who they're coming to arrest. Okay, uh, you're going to know the song. Sing it with me. slow down this morning and kind of get our our uh, thoughts in order you know our thoughts in line and uh, understand exactly what was taking place there that night and who they were coming to get because you see they didn't come just to get a man you see they come to get God's son and uh, and that's why it's important that we do understand that that this was the this was the calling that Jesus had on his life. He knew that when he came to earth and, and that this day was coming. And, and we just can't, uh, uh, you, you can't lighten the, uh, the impact of what that was like. I mean, these were the last hours on earth. And this was also the last hours that, that Jesus had with his disciples. And uh, yesterday, we finished that prayer. Uh, you remember it was a three-part prayer. He had uh, uh, he prayed for himself, and then he prayed for his disciples. And then yesterday, as we looked, it was his prayer for all believers, for you and for me. And uh, and I just want us to understand that impact, okay? 
as that this is not just a man that, that uh, you know, was walking around, you know, 2,000 years ago. This is not uh, uh, some story in a history book. This is Jesus. This is God's son that, um, that, that did this, that uh, went through this. And so I don't, I don't want us to miss out on that, okay? I'm in John chapter 18. I sure do thank you for guys for, for hopping in this morning. I uh, spending some time today working on some things for our, our, our kids, and so uh, that has been my uh, my focus all morning. And and so I, uh, uh, I I've had so much fun, and I'm hoping to uh, uh, I'm hoping to get something out this afternoon to parents, grandparents that uh, uh, just kind of be on the lookout. I'm, I'm thinking I'll be able to get it ready by this afternoon, and so. Uh, uh, Whenever you see it, I want you to get your babies involved, whether it's your kids, your grandkids, your neighbor's kids. I don't care. Let's just uh, let's get out and have some fun, okay, with those babies. I'm in John chapter 18. We're going to read the first 11 verses. I hope you have your Bibles with you because I want you to see these words come alive. When Jesus had spoken these words, and again, that's the prayer, okay? He had just finished his prayer. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he entered and his disciples entered. So now we know exactly where Jesus is. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's just crossed over the, the, uh, the brook Kidron. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. So now we have one of the favorite spots of Christ. It's, uh, it's well noted as to where he liked to go. This was kind of like a quiet place for him. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. And so I just want you to visualize this for a minute. Judas is leading a pack of many, many men on their way to get Jesus. Now, when you really want to break this down, it's very possible that, that this was a, uh, I, I guess, kind of a, a group of Jewish temple guards. I mean, we really don't know for sure. I would strongly imagine that there was a, um, a, a group of Roman soldiers that were there too to make it uh, to make it more official okay if you will but here's the thing or more legal I guess is a good word the thing is is that the number of soldiers here most theologians believe that when Judas and this troop of men came that it was somewhere between 200 and 500 men came to get Jesus and so I just want you to visualize this. We'll just say on the low side, we'll say it's 200. And so here comes Judas leading this pack of armed men. And look how they're coming. They're coming with lanterns, torches, and weapons. This is violence. Okay? This is not a peaceful mob. They have one thing in, in mind. They're coming to get Jesus, and they're willing to do whatever it takes in order to get him. And so here's Jesus, his disciples. He's just finished praying, and here comes the mob coming through the garden. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, he went forward. In other words, he went to them and he said to them whom are you seeking see Jesus didn't run Jesus went straight to the problem he went straight to the situation he didn't try to run and hide he didn't try to send his disciples for him he was the man he took the lead this is again this is a leadership role that jesus is showing us today that when we encounter problems we deal with them and they answered him jesus of nazareth and jesus said to them i am he well he didn't shuck it he didn't point fingers he said i'm the guy you're looking for 
I'm the one. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now, I'm going to reread that verse because I want to get this impact as we roll into verse 6, verse 5. They answered him. This is who we're looking for. Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now, when he said to them, I am he, get this, y'all. They drew back and fell to the ground. Can you see that? Can you see the power of God in just those three simple words, I am he? We're talking the power of God. Put those men backwards. They did not have a choice. This was, this was both Jesus uh, with a personal identification. It's like, you're not looking at these men over here. You're looking for me. I'm, I'm the one. And then it, it, was, it was also this, this manifestation of deity was right in front of them. And those guys could not help but fall down. Oh, my word, what an image. And then he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said again, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, then let these go their way. In other words, if I'm really the one you're looking for, then you take me and you let these guys go. Because they're not who you're looking for. And he said that, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke, of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. And then it gets real interesting. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant. In other words, this is, this is one of the guys that's coming up there that's, that's right up there with Judas. And, and you have to imagine that this is quite possibly one of the leaders of this pack uh, because he's representing the high priest. Okay, so you've got Judas and the high priest. And you've got to remember, it was the high priest that, you know, was doing this uh, under, underhanded bargaining with Judas. Remember that? And so now you've got the servant of the high priest that's there. And so he's all big and chalant and, you know, he's rolling up in there with, uh, with Judas. And so Simon Peter just reaches in and snatches his sword and whoosh, cut off the right ear of the high priest's servant. And the servant's name, we, we really need to understand this, was Malch, Malchus, M-A-L-C-H-U-S, Malchus, or Malchus, different pronunciations, I call it Malchus. Now, I'm going to ask you at this question, at this point in this conversation, we've only got one more verse to go. Where was the troops? Where was everybody? Remember what it encountered back here? When Jesus answered them in verse 6, now when he said to them, I am he, what happened? They drew back and fell to the ground. And so I ask you this question. This, morning. this is not a trick question. I ask you, were they still on the ground when Simon attacked? Or had they rose up? Because we don't have that scripture. It's not here. We just don't know. Was he down? Was he already standing back up? Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then Jesus said to Peter, again, <laughs> having to get on his boy, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? In other words, shall I not fulfill what I'm called to do? I hope you see this image. I hope it's very vivid in your mind. I wonder if we would defend Jesus in a situation like that. Something to think about. They were outnumbered almost 
five, six to one. If there was at least 200 there, if that was the low number, and there was only 11 of the disciples, those guys didn't have a chance. And yet, without thinking, he defended his Lord and Savior. I wonder what we would have done. Do we defend Jesus today in the world we live in? Guys, we're, our, our Lord and Savior is under attack. I mean, it's under attack. Jesus, the Son of the living God, is being pushed farther and farther and farther away from the sight of people. Our world is, is turning so evil. I, you know, I ask Denise this on a, on a regular basis. How much more evil could the world have possibly been when God destroyed the world the first time with, with Noah? How much more evil could it have been then than it is today in 2020? I can't comprehend it. I just can't comprehend it. Folks, it is time that we, the Christian, rise up. It is we, the Christian, it's our time that we make it very plain exactly who we stand for, who we love, and who we serve. It is time for we, the believer, to follow the words of Scripture that teaches us that we are to be holy because He is holy. We are to be set apart from the world. We are not to look like the world. We are not to act like the world. We're not to live like the world. We're not to talk like the world. I mean, in the world, but not of the world. Okay, In the world, but not of the world. How, how are we doing with that? I need work. How about you? I need work on that. Would we have defended Jesus? Do we defend Jesus today? Or do we just allow it to go as far as we can? I've shared with you many times now over the past two or three weeks uh, uh, from the pulpit that some of these issues that's going on in our country right now, this is not a skin issue. It's not a skin issue. This is a sin issue. It's sin. It's all, it's all about sin. Um, and I can go further with that, but I mean, that just sets the precedent. Sin is sin, and it will always be sin in God's eyes. Whether you and I agree with it or not, it's still sin. Um, you know, the Supreme Court had another major, major ruling this past week uh, in the life of the uh, homosexual community. Just because the law says it's right doesn't mean it's right in God's eyes. And we have to understand that. And we're not bad people. We're just agreeing with what God says and not what man says. Okay? This right here, that's what we have to agree upon. Right here. God said it, and it doesn't matter what my opinion is. <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't. I believe. And that's what we've got to stand on. So now we've had the prayer. The Roman army, the, probably the Jewish temple guards, led by Judas. And we already know the high priest servant. This is the main dude that's there. They've come to get Jesus. And just the presence of God put them on their knees. And then Simon defends his Lord and Savior. You gotta wonder now you think about this. This is a side note. He took off his right ear. You got to wonder, was it a missed shot? Or was that what he was aiming at? Or was he going for the throat? Something to think about, isn't it? But Peter didn't flinch. He moved forward. Guys, have an amazing Wednesday. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, if 
you did not get a chance to catch all of our uh, morning coffee and chat time, I, I want to strongly encourage you to go back and to rewatch it again. Because I don't want you to miss anything today. I don't want you to miss any of this. Okay, this is powerful stuff. Um, real quick, tonight, 6.30. Uh, man, 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 we're going to go right back into Exodus. We're going to look at the, I think it's the first half of chapter 20 tonight as we look at the great canons of God. The Ten Commandments are tonight, and that is at 6.30. So I strongly encourage you to be with me, and we're going to dive in deep there. Again, that's at 6.30 tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. Miss Pat, Sunday school with Miss Pat. She is breaking down the model prayer in Matthew chapter 6. And then tomorrow night, uh, we're going to hang out with Brother Johnny. Uh, we'll be outside. Looks like the weather's going to be amazing, so we are going to be outside. And uh, if you can't uh, join us on campus, make sure that you catch us online. And uh, we will see what Brother Johnny has got to share. And that is, again, tomorrow night. And uh, I'll try to be on the lookout this afternoon for something that I'm really, really praying I can get wrapped up here uh, for our kids. And, uh, and so if you have uh, kids in your family, if you have grandkids, or if you have neighbor's kids, uh, and it's going to be something that you can print off, okay? And so I want you to, uh, I want you to make sure that uh, that you get this and get it all taken care of and print that dude off, so that uh, you can have some fun with your babies again. Hoping today, tomorrow for sure, but uh, we'll shoot for this afternoon. In the meantime, man, y'all have a great Wednesday. Enjoy a great cup of coffee for me. Uh, pray for me as uh, we are preparing for Sunday. Uh, the worship. Uh, list will be posting today at noon, I believe, uh, which will be our songs for this coming Sunday. And so uh, if you get a chance to take a look at those, so look those up on YouTube, sing those, get ready for it so that you can sing loud and loud and loud and enjoy a powerful time of worship on Sunday. But remember, online or on campus, it's Ridgewood Live. I'm out of here. I will see you guys um, tonight, 630. Love you guys. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.